hey, hey. video that I did where I was rambling off and got off the subject and I was just rambling on um, just talking about things that weren't really about the title of the video but in this one I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it brief there's only two ways to learn the guitar two ways now, I know on YouTube, you have, like, games that you can play to learn how to play guitar. There's a category that that's in. On YouTube, you have uh, people trying to teach you how to do songs on the guitar. That's in the same category. Um, you have people who try to teach you how to play, uh, you know, a lick. That's in the same category. That is the other, that is the alternative category. Okay. Um, now, also in that category that over, oversteps that, that's more sophisticated and professional, is if you learn how to read music to a certain extent, and you learn songs through playing music, and you learn the scale to go, you learn one scale at a time. Like, you know, you may learn the A scale and work with that for so many weeks. You may learn the C scale and work with that for so many weeks. Um, you may learn all your A chords, or you may learn all your B chords, or all your C chords, your E chords, your D chords. That's all in that same category. I've seen, matter of fact, a lot of my friends have learned how to play that way, just learning one thing at a time and then creating other things with it. But the thing is, like, let's say they learn the A minor scale, okay, or the A pentatonic. Um, all they knew was that the scale that they had learned was the A pentatonic. Once they started putting the notes of that into other things, they really didn't know um, what the terminology was, the keys and, and the theory and all like that that it ran into. They may have been playing an A, and then um, they might have took that A shape and kept moving it all over the neck, Every time that they listen to a song, they would just play that same A shape somewhere else, okay? And that's how they improvise, okay? That's all in the same category, but the other category is, and this was the category that, that I'm working on, that I use, um, my category is theory. Best thing that ever happened to me. Um, theory means that instead of you learning one song at a time, one scale at a time, one chord at a time, you learn a series of things that relate to each other, and you learn what they mean all over the neck. Like if we go to an A here. 
Okay, that A becomes obviously a B. And then if you understand that there's a half step between B and C, then you understand that this one here is a C. Okay. Um, I'm going to demonstrate here for you. And then I'm going to introduce you to my friend Fred Socolow. But I'm going to demonstrate to you what theory does when you have somebody like Fred Socolow teaching it to you, what it does for your playing. You know, you can look at all these you, these little jam tracks and, you know, these little books and stuff that with the CD and try to keep up with somebody else, play some Metallica, play some whatever. Now, don't get me wrong. Anything that you play, whether you play theoretically like I do, or whether you play uh, songs or scales or licks or, or uh, you know, transcriptions to other people's work or whatever. Whatever it is, in order for you to do anything impressively, you have to work at it for weeks and weeks until it becomes something else. Okay? But um, just like that little thing I was doing... Excuse my amp. Yes, this is going clockwise on the scale. It's going up a fourth. Backwards, it's going up a fifth. See? See there? Okay. So you have... You have C in the middle, which is your first chord, and your four chord is on the right, and your G, which is your fifth chord, is on the left. So that's the first four and five. The way you get the first four and five on the cycle of fifth charts is you go 
to the middle chord in between the three, that's the first chord. The chord to your right is your four chord, and the chord to your left is your fifth chord, okay? And then you get the other uh, ones, you keep going up a fifth to get one frame of sounds, and you go up a fourth to get another form of sounds. Um, and you can practice that chart. Um, but um, the reason why this works is because this F is the four chord to the, end, the chord that I'm going to end, which is, see, see how that sounds? Four chord, and here's the first four and five. Okay, 
So there's the A. The A sounds better because the tune doesn't really fall into a blues vein or a hard rock vein. So therefore, the A sounds better than the C. Okay? So, you have choices um, whenever you're playing, when you go theoretically into your training. Okay? I encourage you to go theoretically because you can play theoretically and then you can play anything you want. You can sound like anybody you want to sound like, you know? Um, if you learn chords, okay, here's uh, Fred Sokolow's favorite two chords, uh, let me see, one's like this, and the other one's like this. and that's a bar chord, you can play that all up and down the neck, and there's a way to mix them up. So that you can play C, F, and G here and then come right down here to the 5th fret and play a different version of that C, F, and G. But somewhere in here you can play that same C, F, and G. And that's how you learn your way around the fretboard. Okay? So, um, it's better to learn theoretically, in my opinion, than for somebody teaching you Oh, teaching you some kind of metallic song. And then all you know is Metallica. Because you're learning one thing at a time. And, and it can get frustrating at times. If you Now, if you learn that stuff while you learn this stuff, the theoretical, the theory stuff, the theoretical stuff. Then it's then then it's then it's more fit. It's it, it really makes you a more well-rounded uh, musician. I'd say do both if you want to do both, but don't skip the theoretic. Don't skip the theory. Don't skip the theory part of learning the guitar. Don't you know? I've had people come over my house and I've said, "Hey, let's jam together." And we play something simple like "Amazing Grace." And they couldn't play it because they didn't study. They didn't put, they, you know, they learn how to play Metallica or they learn how to play, uh, um, I don't know, um, some Steve Vai song or something, you know, um, they learn how to play some old rock hits or something. And they had the transcriptions. And so after playing the rock song so much, they knew how to their hands were all over the place. But then you ask them to play something simple like, hey man, let's jam together. Let's play a good old gospel song like Amazing Grace. They can't do it. Oh yeah, well, let me see. Uh, let me see how you play Amazing Grace. Um... You know, and then they'll be off. Because they don't know that Amazing Grace is a man. You don't end on a C chord, you start on a C chord. Because that's the first one in five.
Okay? So, um, that's what you want to do when you want to be able to play your guitar in general and not just play certain things. You know, I've seen people who can play hard rock, but they can't play nothing else. They can play uh, real hard music, but they can't play soft music. They can play, you know, and, and just give yourself, listen to what you're playing. You get down here, you start learning your chords. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say in this video. Um, there's two ways to learn how to play the guitar. You can learn it by mimicking what other people are doing, or you can learn theoretically. And theoretically, when you learn theoretically, whatever you play is yours. And you might not play a B.B. King song, for example, exactly the way B.B. King fingered it. But you'll sound like B.B. King because you know what chords he played. When you open up a book, you ain't got to play the transcriptions. All you got to do is look at the chords. And because you know your theory, once you look at the chords, you know where the scales are. Because you know what scales go with what chords. Because when you study this guy, okay, Mr. Fred Sokolow, Fretboard Roadmaps. And if you think fret, regular Fretboard Roadmaps is too hard for you, he's got beginning Fretboard Roadmaps for beginners. Now me, I, I just got the beginners Fretboard Roadmaps just to add it to my collection. But this here is the second edition of the regular fretboard roadmaps because that's how good it is they come up with a second edition of the same thing they already did um i have the old edition it's it's good stuff and i'm not trying to advertise or or, or making any profit for you know um you know, encouraging you to get involved in Fred Sokolow material. I'm just saying, this is the kind of stuff, and it's easier than that book called Fretboard Logic. It's easier than that kind of stuff because, you know, he'll take he'll take chords and turn those chords into scales for you, Fred Sokolow, and he'll take scale positions. And turn those into um, chords or core fragments, they call them. Because um, there's chords all up and down this neck. And as you study material like this, okay, then you learn the guitar f theoretically and you don't have to worry about. Who you going to sound like. You don't have to worry about. Um, who you. Who you want to listen to. And who you want to sound like. And you don't have to worry about any particular. Special pieces of music. All you got to do is learn the theory. And then you can play anything you need to play. Because you know the guitar. Or you might know this part of, of the guitar. Or you might know this part of the guitar. But either way, you learn. You know, and like you might, instead of learning just like your C chords. Okay, you'll learn all your major chords. Instead of just learning your C minor chords, you learn all your minor chords. Within very 
short amount of time because you're going at it from a theory standpoint instead of like some guy trying to sell a book. Fred Sokolo is one of the most honest guitar book writers that I've ever learned anything off of. I learned off that book. My first course I learned off that book called Teach Yourself Guitar by Mel Bay. And it's a good book. It's a good book. It's a good book to practice your, you know, and what it would teach me is like, you know, your, um, your, your A minor chords. It would teach you the first four and five. The problem is it didn't let you know that they was first four and five so that you could play them anywhere. So when you learn the A and the E and the B, you know, that then you just memorize those chords, those fingerings for those chords, but you didn't really know how those chords apply to the rest of the fretboard. So I learned one song that I made up in E minor, but I could not, until I started getting into Fred Socolo, I could not take that E minor chord and bring it up here. Because guitar I was learning what was it on that cycle of fifths it was the first four and five chords in an A minor key they didn't let you know that A minor was the relative minor to C they didn't let you know that B minor was the relative minor to D they didn't let you know that because that would make them charge you more money for a book. They didn't let you know that. But when I study Fred, that's the first thing you see in the beginning of the first pages. You, you begin to learn how these chords relate to one another and these scales relate to one another. And how to make everything work for whatever you need it to work for. Because you're coming from a theory standpoint. You're looking at it theoretically. Instead of learning one piece at a time, you know, instead of learning, okay, the A minor scale. Okay, I learned the A minor scale. What do I do with it? How many songs can I play that same minor scale in? And if that minor scale stops fitting, what happens next? Do I go to the C? They don't tell you that. They don't tell you that. You have to figure that out on your own later. But Fred Soglo teaches you that right now instead of you having to worry about that on your own. Because whatever he teaches you, I got a whole stack of books of his work. Um, and what he teaches you is that whatever you learn, whether you're learning blues, rock, country, jazz, whatever, learn your vocabulary. And then you can play whatever vein, genre you want to play in. And that's what he teaches you in every single book that he's ever written. Is how to learn your genre, learn your vocabulary, and then you can play whatever you want to play. You don't need to go to jam tracks or, or go to some guy online selling you, you know, selling you, charging you money to play one song at a time or charging you money to learn one skill at a time or you ain't going to go to some music shop and they're going to teach you how to play one chord or three chords at a time at the music shop okay no learn the guitar theoretically 
Again, there's only two ways to learn. Theoretically and by mimicking what somebody else is doing or by learning one thing at a time. Okay, so I hope that helps. I'm D. Roy Cruz, your Life Applications Officer. If this has been helpful to you at all, please let me know. Um, I'd like to practice. I don't get enough practice, as you can tell. I'd like to practice and do more videos like this because even though I haven't had the time to practice and really work on my stuff, um, I really do believe that I have the best teacher in the world, and I do believe that I know a lot more than a lot of people that can play better than me. I know more theoretically than they do. You know, like, I know how to play simple stuff. All I need to do is ask you, what are the chords? What are the numbers? What are the keys? You know, I know the language. And then I can play whatever we need to play. But if you don't know how to communicate with me because you don't study theory, then anybody that's ever been in a band will tell you that you're flunking in the band because we're supposed to be able to communicate with each other theoretically. That's how bands operate, by theory. They know the theory. So when I tell the keyboard player I'm in the key of C, it doesn't matter what instrument I'm in. The key of C is the key of C. If I tell the bass player I'm in the key of F, then everybody has to play in F. Or they have to play in what? What's the relative minor to F? I think it's B flat minor. Ain't it? Yeah, I think it's B flat is the relative minor to F. Don't quote me. I think it's B flat. B flat or D one? Oh, it's D. See, I'm not. I'm. I'm gonna look. It's either B flat or D. The relative minor to F is D minor. Okay. So if I'm playing in F, and we're playing chords, and we don't like the way those major chords sound, because maybe we're adding a little bit of a bluesy thing to it. Then we go minor. Minor is more bluesy. Okay? So, you know, major is more country. Minor is more bluesy. Okay? Um, and poppy. Major is more poppy and country. Minor is more bluesy. So, hope this helps. I'm D. Roy Cruz. Thanks for watching. Um, leave a comment. Leave a like or dislike and we'll do more. God bless you. Have a good night. Merry Christmas.